Broadcasting from the lush but not lavish studios located in the basement of the O'Keefe Institute for Advanced Film Snarkitude, this is Real Spoilers Episode 751, Mission Probable. <laughs> mission mission probable. definitely going to At this point, <laughs> we've established that these missions are, at the very least, probable. Yes. Yeah, they're not totally impossible. No. Yes. A, a normal human being, probably not. Yes. But for but, Ethan uh, Hunt. But they keep well, knocking them out. Or John Locke. Well, at this point, if you're doing it, if you're doing it long enough, and we've seen all the threats that people are like, you got to come up. <laughs> what are the, what's going to stop these people? Nothing. It is. It, we'll get into it, but it is the 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 catalyst, the thing that is the center uh-huh. of this movie, is kind of interesting. Given well, it's very every, timely, it, yeah. yeah. And and, the, and and that's not they didn't do it on purpose, right? Because this movie was supposed to come out two years ago. I was, was at like, least filming a, two years ago, yeah, for so sure. It's like, so they had it, it wasn't well, as well. We'll get into that, but I've heard that Chris McQuarrie kind of makes it up as he goes. Oh, is that surprisingly right? enough for a two hundred million dollar movie? Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's go around the table, and everyone can introduce themselves. This is Joe. This is Kevin. And this is Tom. And joining us today via the magic of Zoom Tube is Pete from Middle Class Film Class. Hey, Pete. Hey, how's it going, fellas? Doing well. Thanks We're for just, hanging out. Just feeling a little bit uh, nervous that he sounds better than we do, and I, I don't, I don't know how to, <laughs> you know, know how to handle that. He did chime in. I was like, God dang. Yeah. All right. Well, I can I can take the quality down if you want to go get my snowball. My <laughs> no, snowball hey, hey, hey. Snowball. Taking the quality down is our job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't worry. We'll do that for you. You know. Yeah. And, and for the record, I think they might actually lose this time. I, when I went into the movie, I was like, you know what? I think the world's going to end. <laughs> it is. That would be one hell of a way to end this series. Wouldn't it? It's like, man, we lost. That's James it. Bond did it. That's true. <laughs> Reboot. That's true. <laughs> well, he lost. Yeah. Yeah. The world didn't lose. The world no. didn't lose, but he definitely did. Yeah. Yes. He, yes. So before we dig in, shameless plugs, don't forget we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, iHeart, TuneIn, wherever you find a podcast, you can find us while you're there. Be sure and follow us. You never miss an episode. Maybe leave us a review. That's super helpful. Good for our egos most of the time. You can also <laughs> find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash real spoilers. While you're there, like the page, join the group. It's called the League of Show Shares. We're hoping you will share an episode. People who were kind enough to share an episode last week, there are a lot of them. Oh, Librarian Cynthia Glenn Cougar Mellon Brewer Lane Levanway Gus Butisi hey. sharing an episode that his son's actually on this That's time. Very rare when that happens. Yeah. He probably listened. And was like, oh crap! Uh, he's like, ah, I, sh- I hit share before I listen. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> and uh, Brendan McGuckin, Tammy Lynn Powers, Betts, Tom Dowdy, Chris Falls, Chris Magic Man, Gabriel Lugo, Ralph Tribble, Travis T. Witt, Julianne Jordan, dissect that film. Taylor Ward, Josh Rosen, Heather Sachs, Brent Smith, Christopher Rex, Binge Movies, Invasion of the Remake, Geek to Me Radio, Spoiler Piece Theater, Colby Mack, Ronnie Castle, Feel and Film, The Film B, Nostalgia Cast, Ryan Terry, Horos Reviews, oh. Mike, which I think is also a new one, Mike, Mike, and Oscar, Matt Naglia, and In Session Film. So thank you very much. Did we, I hear Brad Hine in there? No, you just got Brad Hine on no. the No, well, I was going to be nice to Brad because <laughs> Don't he, do that. But he didn't show the show, that. so nah. Yeah, like, don't. <laughs> Screw Brad. Yeah, Don't ever be nice to Brad Hine. I will, it's the Hine All right, fine. Yeah. I will say... Brad was was at a con- was some small convention right in town. Yeah, he shot me a message and said, "This guy has a Monster Squad poster, theater used, un un theater used, and still rolled for twenty five bucks." I go, "Are you still there?" Yeah, and he was like, "Yes." I'm like, "I will Venmo you twenty five bucks wow. right now," and it showed up at my door like uh, yesterday. So thank you, Brad. Personal delivery? I, well, yeah, we all we don't live that far oh, okay. away. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I would have done if I was him? I would have bought that oh and then i would have facetimed you <laughs> and, and set it on fire <laughs> oh i would have just set it on fire i would have banned <laughs> ba- brad from the show look at this monster squad <laughs> jim mint poster Unused. that i found 
and first I'm going to wipe my ass with it, and then I'm going to set it on fire. That would be torture, and, then and it would be Calvin be... peeing on the ashes. Yeah, right, yes. right, right. And it would be the best usage of film related to Monster Squad ever. <laughs> Wow, some strong opinions about Monster Squad at this show. Well, yeah. from some people. They're wrong, yeah. but it's fine. <laughs> but no, so thank you, Brad, for Aww. grabbing that poster. It is ready to be put in a frame and and hung up next to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I think... I think <laughs> I, you know what? I think... I think Quentin Tarantino would approve. I think he would do. I think he would. I think to be like, yes, yeah. that no, makes I, total that sense. That was the other thing. Friend of the show and movie boyfriend, Brian Spath. <laughs> When they were go- when the Tivoli was going out of business, yeah, oh. when they were closing. They had in the back, like behind the theater, they had they had to get rid of all the posters that Jesus the- wouldn't like. Yes, <laughs> right. They just had bins of posters, wow. and they were in alphabetical order. And I was like, "Do they have the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood poster?" He goes, "I have both of them for you." Wow. And it's, so it's the it's the one with Leo and Brad Pitt, yeah. And then the other one is Margot Robbie. Nice. Like those are the two that that's I've really got. cool. And I was like, yes. And now Monster Squad's going to go right next there to you him. Go. <laughs> they probably could have like afforded to keep that theater open oh, just, by, those, sell- yeah. just oh, by selling just by selling those. For sure. Well, I think th- I just saw that they're going to start showing oh, movies again. on Friday night. Is that what it is? It's to lure you in to learn about the Jesus. Lord. <laughs> yeah. So oh my it's God. And, and I'm sure it'll all be G rated. What's the- oh, oh, it's going to be? I was, I was thinking it was going to be that Jim Caviezel. Yeah, yeah it'll whatever. be Sound of Freedom. Sound of Freedom. And, and yeah. How Obama stole the election. I don't know. I don't Something think, about that. I don't think that's give it that, time. That's fair. Give it time. <laughs> it's be a zero down on that one. Yet. Documentary. Yeah. Oh god. So oh, Did you mentioned YouTube. Uh, no, I was. I'm still in the middle of shame. I was like, calm <laughs> down. I, I'll tell you, calm our YouTube down. views were down. I need everyone to log into YouTube and watch whatever Insidious Five. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe that crowd isn't watching YouTube reviews, but we gotta get those well, numbers no, up. Nobody watched Insidious Five. That was no, the it, number one. It made movie, like. Right? Oh, did it really? It made like thirty five million dollars yeah. or something. Oh, oh wow. yeah. Well, all it's right. Blumhouse, man. That's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, foot rubbing a bomb pop. Yeah, and a picture with. Zaslav. Zaslav. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we have a YouTube channel. Kevin says you have to go watch it or <laughs> or we won't do these anymore. And yeah. then or uh, else we have to fire Joe. So okay. save Joe. No, wait a minute. Hashtag save Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Does that mean I don't have to get up this early? <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, and they're then, gonna save you, don't worry. <laughs> and then finally we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash real spoilers. We're for five bucks a month you get bonus content and we like you more and you help out when one of these microphones stops working that's right yeah so um, and we have to buy fancy pete microphones yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> so anyway there's all that let's dig in god damn like I, you know when paul harris was on for the indiana jones episode he had said that he had a hard time getting into indiana jones because he had seen dead reckoning first and especially since they use the same track it of, is very similar it's the same no it's not yes Really? Yeah. Which track is that? The train track. <laughs> oh, apparently it's the same exact tr- oh, train track. Oh, it's the Orient Express and Oh. Boat. Yeah. I, I well, there's it. probably a finite number of places you can film a giant train At scene like point, that. Right. right? Yeah. And, and they're already like, it, it makes me think, like, were they like, yeah, we can pencil you in. We got Mission Impossible <laughs> filming. Like, seriously, like, if yeah. they're set up for movie filming, yeah. is there a stretch? Like, I would love to dig into the logistics, but it's just odd. And it's also odd. How many other movies have done the same thing recently yeah. as this movie? The and train the train the train sequence, you mean? Not just the train, Rome. Fast X film in the I exact same this, place. I thought this you know, it's crazy that Going you say down that. the stairs in a little car like I just there's so many similarities like that where you're like, I know this movie was filming several years ago, but how did they get the same train track and the same Rome? They're literally the same place like so it makes me yeah. think there's like some kind of incentive to where they're like, Hey, come film here and Yeah, it's called a vacation. But, but but how do they of all the places you could yeah. film a thing? I know there's a finite number of like major set pieces, but still, they're like this is Mission Impossible. They fly everywhere. They go to Abu Dhabi. Well, it makes me little... wonder because of the gap. Did the other films be like, oh, I heard that was a good film there. Let's go back. Or, or, be, or I, heard Macqu- I heard Macquarie and Cruz are we'll, filming in. Yeah, we'll beat them. The, we, I wonder. Our review will come out first because they're. I was kind of thinking, did yeah. Mission Impossible start doing that a few years ago? And then they're like, hey, this is available. And then how much would that suck? Like when Fast X comes out. <laughs> And there's those action oh, sequences. Man. <laughs> I'm just wondering how much they're like, because they know they're coming out later. Like, you know, Tom I, Cruise that, is sitting he in has his to be pissed, like Zenu building or whatever. <laughs> just <laughs> like <laughs> on the it's a, regen- it's a regeneration pod he has, and yeah. uh, <laughs> on the upside, 
Fast X is so forgettable. That's also true. Like, nobody's going to remember <laughs> I'll it. I'll tell you that, not to jump ahead to the ending and stuff, though. This movie felt like the end of a movie. Yeah. The closure yes. of the Fast X in this movie, yeah. and for all their similarities, they're both part ones. This movie, at the end, I go, hell yeah, I just watched a movie. You could, yeah. Fast you could, X, they're like, and you could watch this and be like, okay, we're done with this movie. It, it felt like a yes. Yeah. Well, story. supposedly like, they they were kicking around, ending on a on a cliffhanger, and Cruz was like, no, he's, we're not oh, doing that. He he's like, oh, it needs oh, to be nice. a complete experience. Yeah. He's and, and and like it's obviously an open ended ending. Yeah, for sure. But but it, there's closure on this part, right? Like there's still like the the mission itself has not been completed, but like they've reached a logical stopping yeah. point yeah. in the story. I didn't walk out like fa- the fa- ending of Fast X would have <laughs> been upsetting had I given Cared about, a- <laughs> no, about that movie. The ending of Fast I was just glad it was over. Yeah. I didn't like you I didn't care how it ended just oh, we're, that done. It, just, we're done now. It was like my first marriage. I don't care how it ends <laughs> just as long as it ends. What what do I got to get do to get That's to the That's a hallmark end of a good blockbuster movie. Yes. <laughs> Comparing it to your ex <laughs> wedding. <laughs> yes. I always think of Lord of the Rings as like the perfect way to mm-hmm. close because I mean obviously that's one big story, but each film even though it's a third of one book feels like you've just completed one experience, one yeah. journey. It, I think Infinity War is the same. The yeah, end of Infinity yeah, War you're just too. like yeah. That's the end of that movie. Yeah, no, we I still mean, haven't those... our we still haven't achieved our overarching yeah. goal. Right. But we have come to a stopping point. You got your tickets yeah. worth. The, yeah. the worst thing about leaving I mean, leaving a movie feeling like you know, like there's just kind of that bummer feeling. And I know it you know, these movies aren't the first to do it. Obviously, like Star Wars left you on a cliffhanger. I mean, they've been well, doing Star it. Wars didn't, but Empire did. Well, no, right, right, right. I meant, the, I meant, I meant in the series. Yes, Look, we're course. nerds. Okay, sorry, I know. Got, like you gotta. Yes, I, everyone listening was saying the same thing. <laughs> sorry, I, Heather, I know, I know. All right, so so we, they've been doing it for a while, but there are ones that do it really well, and I think Fast, obviously, Fast was bad. Mm-hmm. This one does it well. Spider Verse, oh, Spider Verse is hard because I mean, I it was a great movie and I loved it, but man, I'll tell you, if I could capture the recordings of the audience that ninety percent didn't know it was going to end like like mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. like oh, I feel like really? there's a disappointment. I don't know if it's because you just love it and want more so much, but man, the whole theater went what? It was man, this, by the end like, one of the, the better cliffhangers when it comes to a, a two part yeah. movie. Yeah, I, I, think I totally is, agree with you. So I think here's the difference: Fast X, first off, bad. Yeah, uh, but second. <laughs> It ended like mid sentence, yeah. right? Yeah. It, like, ended, it ended with a, a car like, coming down that's the just, thing. That's just the guy writing it stopped typing. <laughs> you right? know where where yeah. Spider Verse it ends on a cliffhanger, but that cliffhanger is a reveal. Yeah, right. Yeah. There's no yeah. reveal to we yeah, went right, over the a whole new character. That's we exactly went over right. the edge of a dam, and yeah. are we going to make it? Are we not going to make it? Like that's that was great. When like when they did it when I was a kid at the serials. Right, you know, mm-hmm. but to get uh, you to come back, right? Because yeah. then the part two was next week, right? Yeah, right, right, right. right. But, but like, that's not what this is doing. Where where Spider Verse like has this great reveal. It introduces the whole. It, it completely yeah. shifts what you've been seeing, and it ends, and you walk out like thinking about it. Where where with Fast X, if you were into that movie on any level, you just walk out with blue balls. Well, and, and <laughs> the other the thing, <laughs> the other thing. Th- <laughs> To be fair, like with Spider-Verse, I said it before, I'll say it again. I mean, they did the bait and switch with the title. This movie has part one in the title. Yeah. Spider-Verse did, and they changed it. And I think they mm-hmm. did that on purpose. And I, I do as much as I love the movie, I think it's a little misleading because it was there, part one, and they changed it to Across the Spider-Verse and Beyond the mm-hmm. Spider-Verse. So I, people didn't know. We're nerds. We're living this world. Like, I think most of the audience, I mean, because the reaction, they go, what? Like This they, didn't need a part one No, the No, th- th- this is the thing. Why yeah. was this not just, I guess, because they haven't, I guess in the movies at the end, they get the threat. They get the thing. Yeah. It's a part one because they didn't get the thing. But you're right. I mean, I this finished, I'm like, they could have called it a different title. Like, well, as they just called it Dead Reckoning s- and then moved on yeah. to... Like Infinity Mission, War and Mission, Endgame. Yeah, Mission they're Impossible one, submarine movie. They're part one and two, Endgame and Infinity War, but they don't have a oh, part yeah, one. Sure, Mission right? Impossible so, 7, Ocean Gate. Ocean, oh, oh, actually, it's, it's number eight, so it could be Ocean Gate <laughs> G8. I no, this is seven. Eight. But the next, the one. next one will oh, be yeah. eight. Oh, to go to the <laughs> I did see that James Cameron had tweeted. I think that was James Cameron. Yeah, well, yeah. And he was just like, I'm not doing an Ocean yeah. Gate movie. 
Like it's not. <laughs> He's happening. like, I don't have time for this. <laughs> you know, I don't have time for this. <laughs> but I'm gonna respond to these your stupid ass. Right, like, you right, know, right. You just know that anytime James Cameron has to stop exploring the ocean, creating new technology, <laughs> can you you know how pissed that guy is, right? He's like, I see. I I think he should make an Ocean Gate movie, and it should be like ten minutes long. Just like a little short. They just go a down. A little short before boom, Avatar. Credits. No, <laughs> like it's, it's eight <laughs> minutes of warnings of them right. going into an I mean, unsafe vessel honestly, and then like, it implodes. I don't know how you would get a movie out of Ocean Gate. You don't. Like, you, I mean, James I, James Cameron could at this point. I think he's kind of made his bones. Where but he like, wouldn't want to. No. Oh, that's yeah. the thing. No. That's the thing. James Cameron's way too busy. I mean, think about it. James how. Cameron is too classy yeah. to make money about people dying at sea. Yes. yes. Oh, he, would, not, he would right? never do that. That's not what he's going to do. <laughs> no. And make it an action movie. Well, yeah. it has Except to be for Titanic. Just, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that was but, the joke. It, <laughs> a lot of people had, died to see it that movie. But it, but it has to be worth his time, right? Six people? Yeah. I mean, he doesn't. A boat full? <laughs> No, Done. it's like yeah, well, a big boat. Yeah, right. yeah. Like six a, billionaires. A yeah. <laughs> six billionaires is like forty thousand real people. That's oh, true. That's yeah. a fair the rate, point. The, the that conversion rate. True. I forgot. That is okay. true. Yeah. But okay, so this this guy, Tom Cruise. I gotta say for a Forever. second, no matter what your personal feelings I, nope, are I, about him, I don't disagree. No one, and I mean no one, is preparing for films like this guy. So this is what things. I will say. My only complaint is, I wish he had started with this mentality younger. Th- which is I what don't... Jackie Chan did. Yeah, he that is the closest comparison to somebody going being, up on buildings and sliding. Just being I, prepared I for a role is yeah. Jackie Chan. If you've sure. never, if you've never seen Police Story or Rumble in the Bronx or all of that stuff pre like Rush Hour. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. The Rush Hour, Rush Hour well, is fantastic. American films, the non-American, the films. Hong Kong yes, the stuff, films, and... ev- all of that stuff. He is doing what. Yeah. Tom Cruise is doing now. I mean, he almost fell off a building. He catches himself before he falls to his death with no wires. Like, if you see the behind the scenes. In stuff, which one? Whichever one all he slides. To, yeah, the oh, movie. Oh, yeah, every, all, all every one of them. That one where he's sliding down the building. You know Jackie Chan? Yeah. Yes. And yes. he catches himself. Yes. And he has no wires. Well, and Tom boom. Cruise does the same. Remember when he. In, was it the last one? Where he's jumping building to building. And he breaks and his breaks two. Ankle breaks his ankle ago. and then yeah. gets up and starts running yeah. again. He broke his. Like, it's. But so. He's just like, we're not ruining this shot. Here's there's a scene in this movie that I have not heard anybody talk about. Okay. There so we're jumping ahead because yeah. this is what we do. Deal with it. Like, if you don't like it, go listen to something else. So where they're they're getting ready to go do the train thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right? And he's like, Well, here's how we're gonna do the train thing. Right. And they start and they start well, as he's explaining it, yeah. they're showing you the thing and then they and then they pull back and they're like, That's not what we're gonna do at all. Yeah. Right. But there's a there's a moment in there where he's like, Oh, I'm gonna get off the tra- the train this way. And he's like, I've I've got the, the parachute backpack and you yeah. see him on the train pull the thing and it's this giant elaborate yes. stunt that I thought they they were like flash forwarding in time. And he yeah. never does it. Like Just he, for a, he, yeah. he for a for like a two second cutaway, yeah. they had to have spent probably three million dollars <laughs> to get that two second. <laughs> well, cutaway. well, let me tell you, and, me, and him do a yeah, life a, a legit endangering stunt, stunt no, for a two second cutaway. No, let me tell you, Tom. So if you did you see my tweet from earlier? I don't follow you on Twitter. Well, that's true. Good, good. <laughs> I don't want those followers. How many times do you think? So we know Tom Cruise does his stunts, and that's what I'm leading up to. Is it's incredible the dedication he has. How many times do you think he? Did did skydiving to prepare for this action sequence. 13,000. Well, that's a lot. <laughs> I don't know. 500 skydives. I saw something that said like he did, did. the motorcycle thing. Oh, like 1,300 13, meters. Yeah, 13,000 yeah. meters. Yeah. No, 13,000 times. Jumps. Oh, that's what he yeah. did. Oh, okay. Right. okay. Yeah. 500 wow. jumps for skydiving. Yeah. So they had, f- and they filmed it, and they tracked it. They put GPS on him. They tracked the wind. They tracked how the distance he went. They tracked everything to give him the perfect jump, the perfect landing, make sure the bike was far enough away from him. 500 jumps. That's crazy. That is wow. a lot of that's jumps. Insane. Yeah. It's weird that, like, that's enough jumping out of airplane that, like... <clears throat> You're bored by it. Oh, right? You should watch the footage. He lands and he's like, he goes, hey, McHugh. And then he's like, <laughs> high five. No, see, if you watch the behind the scenes, it is insane how confident movie actor Tom Cruise is yeah. skydiving and parachuting. He has such control and he lands. He walks and he's like, hey, that's a good jump. Like, it, it is. It's second nature. Yeah. He's, he's turning learned... into Richard Branson where he's, he's, a, he's an actor second, you know? Yeah. yeah. Richard Branson is a billionaire second. <laughs> yeah. So he. He learned motocross. Like, that's... But he's been riding... I feel like... I mean, if I'm... I don't think that I am, though. He's been riding motorcycles in these movies 
since Forever. the first one. Wait, he knows yeah. motorcycles. He learned in every movie. Mo- yeah. Right? Yeah. And I've, yeah. <laughs> but he learned yeah. motocross. Yeah. Oh, motocross I see is very different. Yes. Okay. Motorcycles and turning all that, you know, complicated high speeds. He's done it. Motocross, he's jumping 80, 100 foot mounds. They said he went 80 feet in the air. Movie yeah. actor, 61 year old movie actor Tom yeah. That's Cruise. That's the bigger part of it. The 61 year old is more impressive. 13, That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. 13,000 motocross jumps. 80 feet in the air movie actor i mean this guy is learning professions yeah. that people study their entire life to give us two stunts in a movie like it's just the dedication so again no matter what your personal feelings I don't look that's it is what it is but just what's you got, on film you gotta here you got to ask is, yourself <laughs> is he okay no, like I, like I think. It's, no he's I mean, not always I, been no to that yeah yeah but, yeah but like now i'm like i think he might be suicidal like oh. i think he's my feelings on him are, I, are... you know you know somewhere he has written down if i do this stunt and i die doing it put it in the movie yeah oh yeah. without Absolutely. question well, well yeah i mean it can't be for nothing like but it just my feelings on him are the same it's called the vic morrow clause <laughs> oh, God. and you know he, he films <laughs> he films the stunts is their first day of shooting yeah, I knew that. So he because knocks, he knocks all, the, he knocks all yeah. those out. I mean, and then, well, but I think it's like, well, why would you film a whole movie if he, something happens? Because if he gets injured and he, true. and he kill, and he he's got needs six weeks to oh, recuperate, yeah. which is kind of didn't that happen? Or no. he broke his ankle? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you so can't he, do it in the middle. It's like you got to do it and see how it goes. The big stunts, and then the rest of it's just your normal. I yeah. mean, I say just your normal. There's cars and running and all that, but not but not the life. Threatening. Threat, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I like. I totally believe everybody has the right to practice any sort of religion that they choose. That, that's. I'm totally with that. He's a wackadoo. <laughs> like that's the bottom line. And the technical like, term. Yes, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Clinical, <laughs> yeah. clinical but, diagnosis. Yes, but yes. I do. It, it's just like Daniel Day Lewis. Like I, I have a different feeling of that's Daniel Day notes. Lewis. That's. But I'm, that's so cool. Joe and I came to the conclusion. <laughs> I just have to say, I have in my notes method acting. Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah. Daniel Day Lewis, great actor. I know how you feel about him. I, think, yeah. I love Daniel Day Lewis. I think his methods are cool. I think his movies are incredible. But Daniel Day Lewis goes, "I'm going to learn how to thr- to sew, or to Tom, make a shoe or something." Tom yeah. Cruise yeah. goes, "I'm going to learn how to skydive, pilot a plane, do motocross." From like, how, fire. How is this yeah. any different? I mean, this is method acting essentially. It's method stunt acting. Method stunt acting. But why? But we don't. Tom Cruise doesn't get the accolades. Does he Daniel, have an Oscar? No. Because he's been he's been nominated though, right? Yeah, I think he was nominated for Rain Man and Born on the Fourth of July. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. Not- you know what's really really gonna piss off people is when they start doing best Oscar for stunts and Tom Cruise wins the first one. <laughs> that's, gonna, that's gonna piss everybody. And All the they should have been oh, doing. Be- like it's kind of late to the game to start doing yeah. a best stunt. Oscar. Yeah, it's they should have been doing that for. It's kind of decades. like the the Rick Baker makeup award yeah. where like you know that was what eighty. 80- but 82 yeah. when he wins that and it's like so you had all of this time to to nominate somebody for makeup and then finally you you do it and rick baker wins now he's in the same class as the suicide squad well i mean but it's <laughs> tough though because like you got to start somewhere and you can't retro i mean i mean no, sometimes I agree. they do little like honorary awards right i think there are like plenty Mel Brooks of is getting an oscar this year it's oh an is honorary you? at the i think there are Bowl. plenty of stuntmen and stunt Sent people and not for best makeup, by the way. That was their no. two separate. Yes. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> He's not right, right. A secret makeup artist, in the... <laughs> but that are that are sitting at home being like, ah, you know, I sure, shattered yeah. my collarbone. Yeah, in this, I know. You know, well, especially when they use stunt people less and less, yeah. than they ever yeah. have, yeah. And so, like, that's what that's the other reason I feel like it's a little late to the game. But, I would agree. With but that. if it encourages studios to use them more, because I I do think it makes for better movies. It's, to Paul Harris's point. If you were to see Indiana Jones and this back to back, especially if you saw this first, yeah, which, is, that which is how the critics locally did, definitely skew your your feelings on Indiana Jones because this is like unbelievable. Yeah. Like it's on this movie is on a completely different level, and I do compare it to Police Story and things like that mm-hmm. by Jackie Chan because you don't see this type of filmmaking anymore, right. like the risk taking or the set pieces. I think if James Gunn ever, if we ever get back to the Justice League, he needs to get Macquarie to do the Justice League. Like, yeah. let him, the ensemble of this this movie, along with, like, different story threads and things like that, I think Macquarie would make a killer Justice League director 
because he can handle all of this different stuff. Because this movie is so big. Yeah. Like, I don't know how else to describe it as like, this is a big, massive movie. And it feels big. It feels yeah. big. Like, in a good way. Yeah. The scope is big. Yeah. Yeah. So we're we're thrown back in. I for I I did not rewatch any of the other ones, but I forgot that they have kind of brought Tom Cruise back into the fold. I feel like he's been out on the Okay, every single movie he goes I guess rogue. that's true. But <laughs> this movie to its credit, I loved the meta, meta commentary. Yeah. What's the name of this thing? Impossible Mission Force? Are you serious? This guy yeah. always goes rogue. Like this movie was such a meta takedown of how ridiculous the entire series is. I like, I like more the fact that they finally too. referenced that IMF stands for Inter- International Monetary Fund because I'm always <laughs> oh. like none of these politicians are getting confused. Yeah. Like that's a thing. So right. I was I yeah. was I liked hearing that. I the I but I also liked that I feel like this movie had humor in a, a way lot of humor that the yeah, other ones have it yeah. yeah and 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 a lot of physical humor like I was the scene re- in the car is the one that really stands the scene out scene in the car and oh, the train great. scene when he when he first parachutes onto the train oh. and he and he beats up that guy by accident yeah, yeah like, i'm like this is like inspector clouseau stuff yeah, i right? agree like i i was really surprised like, because like, he lands and then the his parachute's still outside of the the train and the wind grabs it and it slams him but then he slams into yeah, the guy right and then the guy gets up and it happens again yeah. and it's like and he completely defeats this guy on accident on accident which one was funny and two was kind of endearing considering that it's Tom Cruise and you know how massive his ego is yeah. that he like let them construct <laughs> the scene entirely around him accidentally winning. Yeah. Right. Not, and, e- not even that too. He's he's not even on the train for the majority of I mean 90 yeah. I'd say 85% yeah. of that entire train sequence. Yeah. It's it's her which also elevates the stakes because if you think Tom Cruise is the one involved or Ethan Hunt, Hunt is the one involved in this, it's going to go fine. There right. might be some snafu along the way, but he's going to pull it out. But you have this unknown, this pickpocket, this random yeah. Haley yeah, Atwell's yeah. character. Yeah, it, it, it she, is interesting to put a fish out of water. So she basically. Do you think she's a fish out of water? Yeah, she's. A I don't con think. Man. I don't think she is. She's a. She's she a, is. a slightly less. Cap- she's a very less capable fish. I yeah. think she's the girl from the beginning. What, what? what beginning? In the the, but when, the when Tom we get, Cruise would know, right? You but, would think so, unless she has been undercover this entire time. Oh, that I, I'm tell, okay. like that's why these movies work, though, right? Oh. Like, I, I do. I think Haley Atwell, who plays Grace, yeah. is has been like the secret agent the whole time. Maybe huh. I don't like the way. That, I don't think Rebecca. Fer- spoilers. I don't think Rebecca Ferguson's dead either. I don't think she is either. Oh, I yeah. I think. That and I said this in the movie. I was like, they did not kill her. No, they, they, the they, second time, they, they, <laughs> they faked her death to trick Gabriel, the entity. Yes, they, the entity oh, smart. knows that, that the entity knows that she needs to die for the dominoes to be in place. Correct. So they faked her death. So it, so it would look the entity would think that that right domino sequence was occurring. That's exactly what I. Yes. Because you, they they say earlier that. The the entity knows everything about these people. So, and we should say the entity is basically AI. is Skynet. <clears throat> like yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. Like it has become self aware and it is yeah. infiltrating, taking out all of the the truth. It's yeah. infiltrating. It's very advanced. Though, it does its, its own taxes. It's crazy. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. It's cooler than saying AI though. But it is AI. It it's is. what you think of as AI. When they say AI is out of control, but also I, well, you see when you say AI, I think of Nelly. Haley Joel Osment. Think of Nelly. Oh, it's a, AI. It, wow. Oh. <laughs> all right, but this is also kind of the plot of Westworld. Okay, but it's, it's also going to it's also going to be the plot of that new. Gareth Evans. Which one? Who Edwards. did Rogue One? Edwards. Edwards. Uh, the yeah. new Gareth Edwards movie yeah. is where the, John David Washington is trying to, like, AI has taken over. Yeah. I will say, I found myself more engaged with this story than any of the previous Mission Impossibles I've watched. Interesting. Um, like, I, and I don't, like, you're not wrong. Like, yeah. it's like, this isn't a groundbreaking story yeah. by any stretch of the imagination, but, like, I felt for the first time like I knew the names of characters that weren't yeah. Tom Cruise. Oh, yeah. sure. Less, and, less twisty and turny, but I don't think it was for a detriment. It was it was more yeah. self-contained. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's not a bad thing. It's just interesting that – but Westworld is a very recent show, which, of course, didn't get renewed, which brought up all sorts of feelings like, oh, well, that's just frustrating all over again to think about it. But I'm okay with it not being renewed. The whole thing <laughs> is that Westworld is about AI and how they created it for this theme park, but really what they were doing was trying to create AI and profile people, and the AI could predict everything that people were going to do they hadn't done yet. 
And right. so it's like that's exactly what the entity is. And yeah. so just having seen that show, just having watched Fast X, just having seen Indiana Jones, I'm like, this is a weird amalgam of all these things but, that are very recent. Yeah, I mean, we've said that before. Is like sometimes that just happens yeah, where sure. idea, you know, volcano and, and Dante's peak. Dante's peak. yeah, the I parallel. Was, you know, I was just gonna say, I have a, I have a theory about life. this intersecting, very similar, overlapping plots. Yeah, we've had that for decades in Hollywood, right? Yeah. Yeah. The large plots, the illusionist and the prestige. Mm-hmm. I think the AI has been amongst us all. Oh, it's the AI. It's, <laughs> the it's just getting more sophisticated. It's not as obvious anymore when you have Deep Impact and The Day After Tomorrow. Yeah. What, now, what it's, if, now it's just scenes within it and themselves, you know, that are overlapping. Yeah, that's really funny. What if Tom Cruise is the entity? You know what? Wouldn't surprise me. And this me. is no, a that's, biopic. That's a Would Elmer not Hubbard. surprise me. Elmer Elmer Hubbard's <laughs> entity. <clears throat> so the movie starts out. I thought this was a very cheesy scene in the submarine. Did not like it. I, I just it this just, felt like Mission Impossible. One. There's a. It's so interesting. It just felt like a different movie. It did it not did. feel the caliber and of what these movies are. It was especially the worst like, open. I, I'm expecting to, a cold open with some crazy really stunts. cool. Yeah. Stuff. Although from what I understand, there was a different original cold open where they had de-aged Tom Cruise and they didn't like it. They, they oh, it was the flashback. I think they must to have the used original. The fla- they, they've used it. I think. Where it's the flashback to... They said they, they scrapped all the de-aging stuff yeah. for Oh, Cruise. interesting. Which is fine. Yeah, and because the... Yeah, because it looks the Mac- same. McQuarrie was like, it. he's like, it just takes you out of I it. I hate the uncanny Are they gonna? Thing. Are they going to give him those... I, you know, here's the thing. I don't think it's the valley that's uncanny. I think it's us. Like, I think... <laughs> like, like the Harrison Ford stuff, I thought looked really good. Yeah. But at the same time, I couldn't get my mind to stop going... This stuff looks really good. Yeah. Right? Like yeah, I could, yeah, like yeah. because I know it's not real and there's like like you even though I think objectively it looked really good. Like you logically you, you just can't stop trying to find the flaw yeah. because you know that what you're seeing isn't real. You can never truly get lost Do in the moment. Do you think it's because that we they haven't done any they, we know what these people look like when like we, the you know, like Tom Cruise, we've seen Tom right. Cruise grow up basically. Yeah. So we know what he. Lo- Will Smith is the same way. Yeah. We've seen them at that age. Yeah. So do you think like that plays into our head too, where it's like, I think it's just. I mean, I think that certainly doesn't help, but I, I think ultimately it's just we know what they're doing, and we can't not know what they're doing. Yeah. And mm-hmm. if they and if they were doing it to someone we didn't know. There's not a need to do it. I was going to say, you, it's a pointless at that point. Right, yeah. Like, you just cast a different younger actor. You right. Know? So but, this is opening, it, but is general yeah. audience caring about that? Is the, is the GA out there looking at it and going, oh, this is, this is, it's good, but I'm still being fooled. I think most people <laughs> want to switch their brain off and just go, ooh, young Harry. Yeah. No, I think that's, it's such a different thing. Like, it's like we've, you know, and maybe if they keep doing it, like, our kids or their kids can get yeah. there in the yeah. same way that we know these are really stunts and like you know what i mean like we don't have to turn off our we can right. we can turn off our brain and be like i know tom cruise isn't is really hooked up to a wire right, blah, right. Blah, blah, blah. but i just think that the aging is i think that's i think they've gotten it pretty damn close they're, close. they're very that, close but I, I don't know that our brains can ever fully take that last step hmm. maybe our, in, on on this podcast right now because most people who see forced perspective scenes don't think "Ooh, that's a forced perspective thing steam yeah, but have you? Do you guys see Unwelcome? That movie that just came out uh, last year. No. Mm-hmm. It's like a Scottish yeah. Scottish movie or Irish movie or something like that, and it's about these red caps or goblins that are part of like they're almost like leprechauns. And there's a ton of for, for, force perspective to keep a lot of practical effects. And the whole time I'm watching the movie, I'm like, how did they make this movie? This looks great. And my girlfriend's watching it, not thinking about it one second about you know the production value of it, but I'm thinking this reminds me of The Gate little little creatures and a lot oh, of forced perspective oh. and is that the one where the, the couple like inherits like a cottage and yes, they have to go feed yes. then yes i and did the, see that the yes. red caps want her baby yes well they've been doing that since darby o'gill and the little people have you watched <laughs> i mean have you but that sounds very similar i mean that's that's a movie from 1959 and the way mm-hmm. they did that was all forced perspective right and oh, it's incredible t- for Huge chunks of Lord of the Rings. I don't think about it in that. For whatever reason, I lose it in that. Oh, that carriage that Gandalf is 20 feet in front of the hut. It's so incredible. They they do it in Elf at the beginning of Elf when uh, Will Ferrell's Mm -hmm. whatever. It's a little bit more noticeable there, but but yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I I think that's because, like, that's that's something that people have known about for generations. It's just a quirk of our minds that our Mm -hmm. minds are willing to accept, like, that optical illusion 
where with de-aging, it's not an optical yeah. illusion in the same way. Computers right. are different than the yeah. practical. It's because practical. We talked it's about practical all the time. effects. But this whole scene is setting up something that I will tell you. These movies do confuse me sometimes, especially <laughs> the first movie I loved watching as a kid, the De Palma 96 film. But I didn't it's really crazy know that what Brian was De Palma going to that first yeah, one. Yeah, but it's great. Yeah. I went back. It holds up. I, I only watched the first one and then saw this one. Like I just wanted to watch the first again. But – this confused me because the opening scene, the entire point of it is to set up that something weird is going on with AI. Uh, it's like Russians and a submarine, and they shoot a missile at what they think is uh, – they're supposed to have this high tech that no one can find them, and somehow there's another ship, and they're shooting a missile. And so they're trying to take out this ghost ship, and as soon as their missile gets to it, it disappears. And so they're like, well, this is weird, huh? It's some kind of a trick. But then their missile turns around and comes back and hits them. But meanwhile, they're cutting to this super high-tech device that's in the back of it that looks like this huge – kind of looks like the thing from Westworld that's hanging up. But it's this huge, complex the thing. ball or whatever. Yeah. And in yeah. my mind, I'm going like, that's the thing. Like, that's yeah, that's the, the – that's the singularity or whatever. Yeah, that's the thing. But this whole movie plays it off like they don't know what this thing is. And at the end of the movie, like, dun, 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 it was in well, the no, sub. I think, I'm, I'm <laughs> so, like, but no, no, we no. Su- So what happened, the yeah. entity is hidden in – like – Somehow the, the Americans. It's the this source the, code for the entity. The, the, yeah, the, the, the Americans. One of the, entity. The, the Americans had gotten this thing into the sub, and it's like inside yeah. this thing. So that's the that's the key is like they the Americans were like we're just going to test this out and see if it works. Yeah, and they sneak this source code into this Russian sub. Well, it works a little too well, and that's how we end up where we are. But but the thing the the entity is in the sub that big it's, ball it's, is so it's the source code of it the, and what the, they, they have a one line small line where they say yeah. the only way we can stop this is if we find the source code before it's evolved before it's mutated yeah. into its more uh, pervasive version that we have yeah. out in the real world it's like for some reason that submarine is cut off so the source code is un, unchanged and they can find a way to deactivate it from okay there. so the entity sunk its source code to the bottom of the ocean Oh, Which so the a, entity fired the missile and stuff yeah. in order to protect itself. Correct. And it's also showing how impressive the entity is because they're like, this Russian nuclear sub cannot be detected by any any yeah. army in the planet. We've purposely gone into the territory of every country with a military on yeah. the planet and been undetected. But the entity is able to manipulate their electronics very quickly and destroy the sub in a second, one one scene. Yeah. So it kind of shows the, the the danger of the entity and also how smart it is to sink it to the bottom itself okay. to the bottom of the that's ocean. That's the part I missed was it did it to itself because yeah. that's what I was confused about. And and our team doesn't know what we've seen. I guess the way they show it, you know, movies have a, a an unspoken language, right? Yeah. When a movie does a I'm gonna put in quote dun dun dun, like there's there's this language of, of cinema. And yeah. so at the end of the movie when they reveal it, to me it felt like they were revealing to the audience. Right, but they, they were really revealing to the characters. To, to them, and so our team didn't know it, but we're sitting we're supposed to know. I'm like, that's the thing from the beginning. Right. I never thought for a second that wasn't the secret thing that sunk. So I was a little confused with what well, they well, were. Well, I was to... wondering how is that the secret thing? Right? The, I was like the sub, I, you mean? I, like, yeah, I was yeah. like that's probably the secret thing, but I was like, but I don't get how this yeah. connects and why they have the key and like I mm. don't and how the key got to where yeah. they can find it. Like I mean I you know, so like that was a moment it was a reveal for me in that yeah. of like here's how it sure. all ties Yeah, the in. whole key thing is though that so Rebecca Ferguson has one half mm. and then the Americans knowing where the sub went down Wait until it th- waited until it thawed, right? Because they're in the, the the polar ice caps, and that's where the Americans got the second half of the key. Right. Okay. And that's how we ended up. You know, they were trying to get to Rebecca Ferguson. How did Rebecca Ferguson get the first? She half? like picked it off someone. Like yeah, she it doesn't really say a clear. Okay. Yeah. Kitner, who is Kittridge. Your, Kittridge. Yeah. Which I yeah. just watched the first movie, and I'm like, okay. That's so in what... that's this scene with Carrie Yules, where we find out he's the head of the CIA. All of these people. Am I wrong that these were all like? the people that gave Tom Cruise missions in the previous movies. Well, Kittredge is in the first movie. Right. But I'm, but I'm like, like oh, Rob, what's his name is the, oh, Rob Delaney. The, Rob Delaney is yeah. the guy. And like, I feel like you don't bring Rob Delaney in for a, that was a weird cast, weird but I think, choice. but I think Rob Delaney was like the mission head in another movie. Rob Delaney was in this movie. He's in the, yes. the scene where you've got all of like the heads of the military yeah. or whatever. He's the guy the in gas. like the the military suit. He's the guy in like He's the, standing the up in the back while everyone else is lounging. I couldn't tell who that was. That's <laughs> Rob Delaney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe with gray hair or something. Yeah, and we he had no beard. Great. Yeah, the great Ron Delaney from Home Sweet Home Alone. Yeah, 
<laughs> that's funny. I just I missed from it. That Deadpool. Was, he looked familiar. I did that thing where I'm like, that's yeah. who is? But that? he had okay. no beard. Yeah, which maybe, they usually got like yeah, a mustache the beard or something. Is why. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so anyway, so we see that's the thing, right? So the entity we've just explained it. That's great. So that's what they set up in the beginning, and now we know. Uh, Ethan Hunt's on the run as he always as is. He always is, but and, he, but he's not on the run because he goes to like. Well, I did think these are there's some great head fakes where I you think this guy walking into this military facility is a bad guy, right? Yeah. Like the way they shoot him, mm-hmm. the way they're like you know the whole thing, and then we find out that it's Tom. You know, it's he Ethan looks Hunt. like a bad guy. He does look like yeah, a bad he, guy. He, like bad guy you know, eyebrows. but I thought the same thing in on the train sequence when we think that Haley Atwell is dead to rights yeah and she's got that guy pointing a gun at her i was waiting for that mask to come off and it'd be rebecca ferguson like oh I was, yeah you know, gotcha Ethan did, like Hunt's... the mask pulling the whole time where they're constantly trying to <laughs> shay wiggum's trying to pull yeah. someone's mask off that is, a, that, that is a hilarious comedic beat he sees a guy and he's like fish hooks his mouth and he's yes. like trying to he's like what are you doing i think that's a really good i i'll tell you what i i I really enjoyed in those. The movies. age of COVID, that was the most dangerous stunt in the movie. <laughs> Get your fingers out of my mouth. You ain't my dentist. Yeah. I really enjoyed those parts. Like they were fun. I thought it was hilarious with that through line of the mask pull off, the the computer hacking where Luther's like. Lex Luthor's not in this movie. No, Lex Luthor's not in this no. movie? What's, who am I thinking He's of? Bald? It, it is it, it Ving is. Rames. Ving Rames. Yeah, yeah. 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 Luthor. His, so name's I like, his name's Luther. You got it. Yeah, okay, so he's like changing their face and all. It's funny stuff, but. I felt like if you removed them from the movie, the plot doesn't change. I just felt like we kept taking – there's so many characters, and we kept detouring to this comedic relief of this buddy cop movie. And I'm yeah. just like, that really didn't push the plot along. You know who I miss? They were there at the end to go, boom, boom, go to the end of the train. But, like, take them out and tell me oh, what – Oh, those two guys? I mean, they kind of, like – I think they're... you're at, I think you're adding the buddy to this team. Yeah, yeah exactly. You have I to th- set up think... for the stakes. I That's, don't think yeah. Henry Zerny is going to join, but yeah. I do think the other guy, it, they've definitely True. put that in front of us, that yeah. that guy might join Well, yeah, the team. I, may, I do like the questions he brings up because those are the questions there as was, the audience. It's all about family. Right. Oh, God. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> See, at the end. AI. It's all family. <laughs> yeah. At the end, though, with the save of the train, I'm like, I, I turned to Katie and go family. And she yeah. started yeah. cracking up because <laughs> she turned. But anyway, I like that guy and everything he shows up and he's great. But I just, it was this detour they kept doing. I was like, oh, come on. Ha, just I, so I love Shay Wiggins and for Boardwalk it's, Empire and all yeah. that stuff as one of the driest senses of humors. Yeah. Like, he's great. I think he's in the new Perry Mason which is, if you haven't seen, no. can I recommend that enough? He's it's a great character actor, though. He's, he's, but he's one of those guys, when they show up in a movie, you know it's going to be elevated. Yes. Like, he's one of those guys. So anyway, I, I just thought that was a little detour, but you're right. They're setting up that character who's also the audience surrogate. He's questioning. He's like, maybe Ethan's always right to go rogue. Yeah. Like, because he had, like we know he always goes rogue because he's doing the right thing. Yeah, I will, I, say, someone... I will say, you know who I miss a lot? Hmm. Simon Pegg. Like just oh, wait, in, uh, just things. in general, yeah. like I think, man, I was like when he showed up and he's doing his thing, I was like, ah, dang it! Yeah, like, where are you? What have you been doing? Yeah. He's come back, living off his Mission Impossible money. Uh, he right? must, be, yeah, he could do whatever he wants. Like you know what I mean? Like he's probably making a couple million dollars for to be sure. in these movies because oh, the sure. budgets are so high. Yeah, and so that for him, that's more than he. He's like, yeah, I'm good. And yeah. he and Ving Rams are filming a lot of this in a room together. And yeah, they're oh, not yeah. with the other. No. Like, no, I mean, no, you no. know, they didn't have to travel as much. There's right. a couple scenes with him and Ethan, but otherwise, it's right. like these guys are in a room doing computer <laughs> stuff, and you know, it's a nice so, yeah. payday. Yeah, Ethan goes after Rebecca Ferguson in this pretty dope, like desert shootout sequence, and he, you know, the the two of them end up picking everybody off, and they have to elude that, like you have to die like the this first he's like you've got to disappear and you know just go to go to ground so she does and that was then, cute of them to try to trick us that they killed rebecca ferguson twice the first yeah. you know in the first 10 minutes of the movie where it's like yeah no she's just... but i mean it's possible right like in these movies it, uh, it's not outside of the realm of possibility that i you're know gonna like lose... killing off emilio in the beginning and stuff but i'm just yeah. saying like you know they didn't kill off rebecca Fer- yeah. i didn't watch the trailer so people probably really knew but i forgot about the emilio thing until you just said that and i was like oh, really do kill him like because real early i was watching that movie at the same time as mighty ducks and i'm like gordon bombay <laughs> it's crazy it's crazy that you bring that. I just watched this. Have you ever seen Free Jack? I haven't seen that one, no. Also starring, yeah, Emilio yeah. Estevez and the bad guy from this movie. 
Oh. Like they're both weird. in it. It's so oh, cool. it's very weird. Oh. You ever see uh was it Men at Work? Is that the yeah, other one? That's great. Yeah. I love I Men miss at Emilio. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I know he directed something. I, he just used to growing up, Emilio yeah. was in so many movies. Oh yeah. And uh, I don't miss him. That is, yeah, man. It's good. Men at work is so good. They should he's not really dead. He didn't die in the, Oh, then we're getting into the fat <laughs> that is the problem with Fast and Furious. Take that back. I didn't really mean it. Because that's the problem. There's no stakes, right? right. And and to your point, it's like people do die in this series. And so maybe Rebecca Ferguson is dead. I, I like to think that sometimes yeah. parts of the team die because otherwise you feel like yeah. Fast and Furious, and you're like, it's cheap. Because I was listening to How Did This Get Made, and they did Fast X. I'm like, I got to hear They've done they them all. And, and, and they were joking the way that me and Joe were. I don't know if we did on the show, but like, if you think that any of those people are dead, <laughs> yeah. and you didn't, they're like, I need you to like cut their head off and roll <laughs> down into an incinerator. Like, none of them are dead unless no. you see them implode or, or, no. you know, Here, or they die in here's real life. The, here's how low the stakes are in Fast and Furious. One of those motherfuckers is actually dead, and they're still going to put him in a movie. Yes, yeah, I was they're just still going to put thing. him in a movie. They joke about that in <laughs> How to Get This Made. They're like, they're like, no, if you if you die, you become immortal in the <laughs> right. in the in the series. They keep like, bring it back. Yeah. So yeah, so they 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 fake her death. Ethan, yeah, and Ethan gets the key. We go back and we see the the the. Kittredge and Kittredge Carrie Ewells. And and... Ewells. I was like, hey, man, good to see you, too. He's like the head of not the CIA, but some kind of I thought it was. Secret I, thought it was I think he course. is the CIA. I think is it CIA? Yeah, okay. I think so. Okay. And, they're, and, you know, they're basically like, this is. they tell us what the entity is and what it's capable of doing. Kind of, right? Sort like, of. no one really, like, there's, he, I think Carrie Ewells is like, he's really the only other person besides Gabriel who's yeah. the bad guy of the movie. It's right. weird to see him speak with an American accent. It is Yeah. Oh well, I, I I've seen you know I've watched, He's watched Saw, I saw and a bunch. So he has. Yeah. American... I've seen none of the Saw except for the whatever one we did with Chris. I Rock, recommend one and two. I've never seen them. That's so. as far as I can get you. But he's really the only one that knows. Everyone else is kind of. He's kind of hinting around what it is. Yeah. And so, you know, Tom Cruise infiltrates, and he says, "Here's I've got this," and they are. He then gives him another mission where he's like, "You got to go get the second half," and then. I didn't know that everyone in IMF was criminals that were either going to be i don't think they've ever I, act, this is the first time i've ever, pete have you heard that before did they just do this in this movie because that was a surprise to me you know i've seen i think i've seen all but maybe ghost nation okay but i don't remember much of the plots i just I is, take these movies individually for what they yeah, are that's probably i mean this is dirty do dozen like this yeah. is suicide squad i i never ever knew imf was criminals that either were going to go to jail for life be killed or they can like I don't know. That just to me I seems always, like a. I mean, I always took it as like they they saw something in yeah. each person and just kind of plucked them out and yeah. But I thought they just were really good agents that got promoted to super secret super secret. Yeah, agent. I didn't know they. But were. No, I did not. I don't think I've ever known that they were all criminals. Okay, that I were... think that's a new information. Which I don't know. I thought felt kind of weird because I'm like, I'm not saying. I mean, whatever. But Suicide Squad it's and a Dirty late Dozen. In the game. Yeah, and it's <laughs> like we're already like concept, these people yeah. are great, and it's like now they're like, oh, these are criminals that had no choice but to be indentured yeah. <laughs> to the government. Like, or you're I'm going like, to jail for the rest of your life. Oh, I'm like, this is kind of crap. I mean, didn't they kind of introduce that with like 007 when Daniel Craig's has this orphan with a, a tough, tough background, sort of past? They plucked yeah. him up. He I wasn't feel, necessarily I feel like, a super I feel criminal. Like with, with James Bond, they were just. They were like, we can mold, we can take this yeah. ball of potential and mold mm -hmm. him into this and secret agent that did. we want. That and scene when he comes out of the water. Oh, I gotta tell you, first <laughs> and I, you heard that story, right? Where he got jacked to the gills for that, and then when he went to go do the girl with the dragon tattoo, Fincher's like, "Hey, can you can you drop like thirty pounds?" And he was like. I just got into the best shape of my life, yeah. and you want me to do what? And he, no, uh, you look put on it. three sweaters. <laughs> he gave, he gave it, what's his name? He gave him Christian Bale's phone number and said, yeah. Yeah. Him yeah. Daniel Craig's like, let me talk to you about forced perspective. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many sweaters can you put on in this movie? In the words of Paul Rust and uh, Matt Gorley, that's a cozy movie. Yeah. Yeah. So, Tom, so Ethan basically says to Kittredge, he says, I'm going to find these keys and I'm going to destroy it. Like this needs to be in the hands of no one. Whatever right. this entity is, is bad news. And you know, it, and again, we've seen that in other movies. And right? luckily if I'm, I destroy technology, no one will ever think of it again. No. <laughs> I, I have a question about that yeah. on that topic. So is that the reason why Shea Wiggum's after him is because he made his intentions about this entity clear? Like, is oh. he, is he, or is he already being hunted because he was rogue from the last time? Well, like the, when, well, the entity predicts everything, right? So it, I, I think when they say it later in the well, movie, Shane Wiggum sent from the CIA, like right, he's he's on an official mission to catch Hunt. 
Well, I think there's two different. I think there's two different things going on. The IMF or CIA or whatever is trying to track him down because he's gone rogue, right? Like, the, you know, they have to have some yeah. control over these agents, which, you know, history is yeah, right, right. pretty hard. But, but is then he going also, rogue from this movie's pl- plot or the last movie's plot? Is it yeah. like carry over from the last one? No, I think it, every movie gets a reboot. That's what I'm saying. He's always on the run. I feel like it's always – maybe I'm misremembering, but I feel like they kind of clear it up and then they give That's, him another mission if he chooses to accept. Yeah, it's, it's, like dir- it's Dirty Harry, you know, or any yeah. cop drama from the 70s and 80s. It's like – you're off the case. Give me your gun and badge. Yeah, and then, and then hey, we need you back, back Cobra. You. Get out yeah. there. You're the best. <laughs> they always do. Exactly. So I, my impression was that he's good again, like as good as these agents I are. I think he's, he's, and in, then... he's in the into the fold. He's in the because good every Yeah, because every time he does go rogue, it's just like <laughs> – He did it for a good reason. Right, but like to the Dirty Harry thing, it's like, yeah, he went rogue – but he did get the serial killer, yeah, so... he did kill the Scorpio killer. I guess you're all right. You, he did kill those three well, rogue Well, and cops. also, like, the idea of him going rogue is kind of dumb because the job is it's, to go rogue, right? It's, like, you're it's go, double rogue, Go though. do stuff, yeah, double, and then if you went, fail at it, rogue. we're going to say that we never knew you. So, yeah. like, you're always rogue, but, basically. But, it, always. but, but if you... You, you're you're going the organization. You're going rogue from the official government. But if you go rogue from the from rogue the people, rogue. then you're just <laughs> now you're back in line. See, right? And they you don't want. They need a rogue you, person. You, you come back around. Luke's back around. So rogue, there's not, so yeah, he not gets a casual his, rogue. He gets his team. He gets Luther. He gets Benji. They are trying to track down. Well, the thing is, they want the key to kind of fall into the wrong hands because yes. they have no idea where the entity is and then they're like well we have no idea what it does so we have to track this down to the very last step before someone uses the thing right but to get some information shea wiggins is like they go to this airport is really what it comes down to they know that there's going to be a buyer for this key and tech has always kind of been in these movies one or two maybe three up to four generations ahead, right? So, but now we've got these. Tom Cruise has these aviators that are basically Google They're AR glasses. Yeah, they've got Google Glass or whatever. What that's a like? very outdated I reference. Know, but that's as far as I can get. That's you. A, that was discontinued <laughs> six years ago. Great. They're AR yeah. glasses. Yeah, he looks so much like Grandpa with aviators on when he was <laughs> trying to hit on her, and he's uh, got this like big puffy cheeks, and he's got the huge aviators and the I'm giant like, aviators. Why, why do you, Why do you look? He looks like a like a. a your your parents trying to dress cool. Well, <laughs> it's not. I mean, it's not quite to this level. But eventually, he's going to get to the Clint Eastwood line where it's just like, stop trying to make yourself the romantic, like the sex yeah. object, like yeah. in that terrible movie where he's fifty years oh. older and he's hitting on the. And here's the thing: he has cast three of probably the most beautiful women in the world right now: Rebecca Ferguson, Haley Atwell. And the gal who is like the Palm arm- Clementoff? No, the other one. Oh, Vanessa Kirby. Vanessa oh. Kirby. And Palm Clementoff is she's no. Gr- I gotta tell she's, you, yeah, she's, she's great on this. She, I thought she's excellent. She's, she's super doing, fun. She's a Bond villain. She is that doesn't. Speak, she's a Bond henchman. Know? That's what I mean. Like yeah. it, 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 yeah, you're right. You're right. Right. Yeah. It, she's a Bond henchman. Yeah. And that's why I kept thinking and how good she was. Where Which I'm like, kind of worries me that that's what these are starting to turn into. Well, okay. Here's the here's the great chicken and the egg question for you. <laughs> I'm watching this movie after I've seen Fast X. And we talk Fast X has become Mission Impossible. Yes. And Mission Impossible has become James Bond. All these genres are starting to blur and it's very strange the way that none of these movies feel like what they originally were. Because yeah. Fast and Furious was a heist movie. It was point break. Right. And then it became Mission Impossible. And so I just I, the lines it's, are blurring in a very Kevin, strange it's, way. It's not confusing, it's the singularity. Yeah, it's, 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 they it's want the, us to be the entity. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they they go to the airport. Really fun scene. It's a it's a great scene. It's Haley Ott was there. She's being a pickpocket. Yes. We find out later, you know, because we got to just. She was hired to by Vanessa Kirby's character yes. to get the key. She doesn't know why though. But Vanessa she's, Kirby from like two movies ago. Yeah, the one when they're at the club or whatever. Whichever and, one Henry yeah. Cavill reloads his arms. That's the last movie. Oh, okay. That's All right. the last one. Yeah. So she's back, but she's hired her, unbeknownst to her, but she's hired her to get the key. Tom Cruise is trying to get the key, needs the buyer to have the key, but to, to trace it back. So they can trace it. But if she's pickpocketing the key, the buyer's not going to go through and get it to where right. the entity is and all that stuff. So it's a really fun sequence. Benji and, and Luther in the crow's nest or whatever in the tower 
but then Benji finds out there's a suspicious package and there's a bomb supposedly right. in the airport. So he gets to track that down. There's a really fun sequence where Luther is trying to tell, <laughs> just talk like to popping Ethan, back and forth. but talking to Benji and they don't want yeah, Ethan to fun. get thrown off because his stuff's important, but there's also a bomb. <laughs> and I thought it was really cool the way I they like went. The, uh, when we get to the main, like the bomb is going to explode. Yeah. Ethan, Tom Cruise is like, and you didn't Wait, think why? To, why didn't you tell why? me this? He's like, I didn't want to. I didn't want to worry. He's but, like, but, but it's also, a nuclear bomb. No, like, but, but worry also, me with that. I mean, and maybe Ethan Hunt can do anything, but still, like, he's on a mission. He has to get that key back. Right. And so, like, what is he gonna do? Go defuse this bomb. Like, there's so much going on. He would have put it in a refrigerator. That's yeah, bomb, <laughs> yeah, that's, bomb that's all you need. So I like that. This was like a Da Vinci uh, Code thing. He's trying to solve. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, that that whole sequence right there leans into real world AI invading our lives and absorbing parts of us. Yeah. Because how many of those uh, Facebook quizzes are are our parents yeah. taking? Yeah. Oh, saying, God, you know, hey, what's, what's what's the name of your pet growing up? And oh, what's the name of the street you grew up on? It's like people are feeding that into the dark web to get password breaking. True. You know, that, tools. right? Yeah. They're like like the, that's how you people are now. What's, what's the for, phrase? Identity theft? You know, sure. breaking into yeah. your, yeah. your oh, life yeah. and taking but over your life. But it's very important that's for what me to that, know that's what the, and, which Muppet I am. <laughs> I was just going to say, what, I exactly. want to know which sex in the city girl I am. <laughs> what color What color nail polish are you in regards to, yeah, your Disney princess yeah. character? <laughs> You're a but, Miranda. But I'm, a, I'm Fozzie. There you go. We all yeah. Yeah. The, the entity is stealing Benji's information as he's shouting those words into it, yes. which comes back later in the movie as yeah. he's taking his voice and uh, turned it into a, a deep fake and, right essentially and, and so what i hear i didn't get a chance to look it up but blake was telling me he read about it and Macquarie apparently kind of makes these up as he goes and they film a ton can of stuff. you imagine the the trust a studio For has to have I know. Yeah. if they i mean if they didn't make so much money and weren't so good that's when they would stop doing yeah. that but they go that's that's it's just like any other auteur where they're just like they get to do it because right. they get results right right right, right, right. Mm-hmm. but apparently he kind of is figuring out as he goes and they film a ton of footage and they kind of put it together in editing because the actors actually don't get they don't know their motivations and don't get their lines Interesting. until mm. they're about to do it because he's figuring it out, which I think is kind of crazy. And I feel like yeah, maybe this would be a little tighter yeah. if, if you know he did. But I don't know. I guess it works. It works. And, so anyway, they haven't screwed up yet. That's why I think it's so modern, though, because that I think sense. AI and the AI threat has been evolving over the past couple of years. And so I think as they're filming it, that started maybe incorporating itself more into the plot sure, line. Sure, sure, sure. Theory. I don't just know just all the sure. deep fakes and the you yeah. Know, it's you it would seems... think that with the masks there would be like another level of like deep fake. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like especially like you invented deep fake. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. So there's the a massive chase inside the airport that is really well done. Another good comedy. So they all yeah. go their separate ways, and yeah, oh they're, man, they're pulling off the. They're trying to pull people's faces off, and then Tom Cruise goes up and does <laughs> his run on the top and. What's it, his face is like, oh, it, I guess we lost him. And he's Shea in the Wiggins, background running. Like, <laughs> that f- d- also feels like it's out of a completely different right. movie. It's funny. It's not a bad thing, but yeah. it is a pretty a scene that's like, you know, it, it's shot from like above. So we're looking up at Shea Wiggins and the other guy. And you can just see Tom Cruise sprinting across yeah. the top of the airport. <laughs> that's also a scene I can only imagine like when they're filming it, right? Where Tom, it's, go now. Like, it's they just have like to cue him to action, run. And then Tom and then, Cruise is just running. Yeah. And he's not running for, you know, 20 feet. I mean, it's a long that run. That dude is yeah. running, like, yeah. for yeah, a, a minute. Yeah. If you go to Alamo, they played this really funny video yes. of all these different clips of things Ethan Hunt's done, and they time it to music, and it's really good. But there's this one portion of it where it's him running and you see all the scenes with him just doing his crazy <laughs> upright run and anyway it's, a it's lot. very funny but they um, go their separate ways but Haley Atwell Atwell gets to away Rome. yeah she, gets she goes away. to Rome for to shoot Fast and Furious correct X. yes yes you know man Fast X would be like we got Haley Atwell Holy <laughs> yeah where she gets caught by the Italian police and she's you know they have all these passports and all of these different crimes and she like goes into her act which is like I'm just a teacher on sabbatical I like this con man stuff she does let me see that passport rubs her finger over oh, it, changes yeah. the picture also but no she takes the paper clip that's but what I, she's I, doing. I thought she changed that's, the picture what, no no, no she's, she just she wipes the oh, paper i thought clip. it was more clear Which i thought also, she had some kind of heat active it okay. drives me insane <laughs> this is my job right why were the why were the keyholes down 
Like, what idiot cop put the keyholes? Oh, where they can facing... always pick there. Yeah. yeah, you never do that. They always face up. That's well, it's like different come on. country. The the toilet flushes the <laughs> different way. The cuffs go upside it's down. The it's... Same thing is like I was watching. I'm I'm doing a guest spot on binge movies, and I'm watching these movies from the '90s, and I'm watching them all, like pull a pistol from the holster and then rack it it's like you just wasted a round like why yeah. would you be running around <laughs> or what are you or doing when they just fired the gun and they put it in the front of their pants oh god and you're like do oh, you get an idea how hot that is oh. well <laughs> well it depends what you're into i mean i, I guess, guess joe fair. if that's your thing yeah I, hey i don't judge again no king shaming on real spoilers so the great airport for yours <laughs> we will shame your kinks whatever they are so she's in rome yeah ethan they... hunt poses as her lawyer gets her out but also like she's constantly evading him so, like, she's like he's yeah. trying to help her <laughs> right 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 and but she doesn't know that she can trust this dude also true she's totally. a pickpocket but she's, she's also pickpocket she's also in way over her head and i don't think she knows how in <laughs> over her head she yeah, is like, like in well, biden here I, I but it makes total sense she's just like yeah. i just need to get away from all of it. Yeah. yes for sure yeah, yeah, right. right here, you take this. I'm out. Yeah. But he's constantly trying to get back to her because you know he needs her for the key that she keeps swiping from him. But also, like she's in immense danger. So right. this leads into a great car scene. Fantastic. Another car. very funny really, thing. Like we, yeah, we, we, great car chasing. Yeah, we've got the dead drop or whatever for the car, and you think it's some Lambo or whatever that Fiat. thing is, and it's a I tiny little. Be Aston Martin, and it oh, turns yeah. out to be a, a Fiat 500. That which goes back to my whole James James Bond. Bond. Thing. That's a good. Yes, uh, it's con- that Fiat actually is a so. I'm I'm a big car guy, yeah. And car chase scenes can very very quickly piss me off. This was wonderful because yeah. you're led to believe that the Fiat 500 they don't say it one time is electric conversion, mm-hmm. so it has a direct drive motor yeah. right on the axle, so it's basically actually able to peel out and drift and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And if you don't know how to drive a car like that, it can be very scary, and yeah. <laughs> and you get the you get the eternal burnout that she's doing yeah. when she's driving. That's that's smart. That's pretty realistic. Because, yeah, electric cars, they don't have, like, the engine doesn't have to... I I have an electric car. And, like, there's no... It's... It was weird the first time I drove it. Like, I, like, I, like, put my head almost through the headrest because there is absolutely no delay between... I'm going to say gas, even though there's no gas. When you hit the gas pedal and that car starts on a a regular car, right? You got a little ramp up. It grabs the gas, it does the combustion, it moves the piston. There's like a little bit of a delay. You hit the the pedal on a on a gas, accelerator on, uh, you hit the accelerator on a on an electric car and you were you off go. like yeah. a rocket <laughs> yeah. like it's and that car crazy. that you're driving to is programmed to give you a little bit of a, a throttle a little bit of a ramp <laughs> up to that level if you're building like a competition electric vehicle <laughs> There's there's a, a certain series of races that uh, the Porsche is very popular in I, I can't remember what it is it's not one, one I'm super into but they experimented with a hybrid electric vehicle in there. And they had to ban it because it was just running, <laughs> running the gamut. It was literally like destroying every single uh, competition. So watching a non-professional driver like yeah. the pickpocket, that was fun. Spin around it, in it, circles yeah. as he's like, turn right, turn yeah, right. It was, it was right, hilarious too. And watching <laughs> oh, Palm so keep cutting back to Palm and her looking like, what is this? Yeah. Doing? And it kept going by. And like the editing is really Tower good. Tower of London, Big Ben. Yeah. <laughs> the editing's really good because the geography felt real. Yeah. Like, because oh, yeah. you know, obviously Palm isn't in driving this huge vehicle around the city, but the way that they filmed her and her reactions to the direction that we're seeing him go by her and everything, yeah. it's oh, really great. well done. No, yeah, she it's, looked like she was having a, a blast. The character looked like she was having super fun. Yeah. I like she's a, ma- a maniac. And then also, yeah. <laughs> there's one of the funniest parts in, this, in the movie is a very subtle. They flip over, they roll over, and at some point they end up on the opposite they side. Switch, where, yes. Yeah, and he they're on the correct side now. And the stakes also of, again, nerfing, there's, there's a, a kind of a theme throughout the whole thing. So uh, taking the power away from IMF or Ethan Hunt or whoever. It's like yeah. if you can't use all these electronic doodads and you can't tap into everybody's phone, you have to go CRT. They rebuild the the mission commands yeah. with all you CRT go analog TVs. Stuff yeah. like that. All analog. That was a cool trope. They have to smash their computers at some point because they're compromised because the entity's in there. Yeah, Ethan being not even being on the train in the chain sequence, which we mentioned before. But in this one, him not being able to drive because his arms are crossed yeah. and he's handcuffed on the wrong side because he didn't think ahead. That, w- that was a, a really great way to nerf a very competent character yeah. who can do no wrong, who his, his, you know he's going to come out on top. You're like, oh, shoot. What's he got now? Now, now, now he's driving it, it, with one arm. No, I think you're absolutely right. Is taking 
taking his skills kind of out of the game and yeah. then letting Haley Atwell, letting yeah. all those other characters kind of pick up his And slack. that's why, without your theory, I call it fish out of water because, you know, all appearances show she's a con man and maybe there's more to it, but they show her... I, even, if, being... even if she ends up being a spy, yeah. for our per- intents and purposes, it, the experience as a viewer yeah. is fish out of water. I yeah. just think she looks... The, the the woman that we see killed in the very in the in the flashbacks, I think, just looks eerily similar. But this flashback is supposed they... to be like thirty years yeah. ago. I know she'd be like She's ten. Not... Yeah, I, I that guess that's scene. true. I guess that's true. Like the, the is that timeline... not a scene from an actual Mission Impossible movie earlier? No, in the I don't think no. so. Because th- what's his, the main the villain isn't in those movies. No, this is no. a totally retcon. That's good to know yeah. because the whole time I was thinking, oh, maybe I should have gone back and watched all these no. movies. I, this, I don't remember that. This scene, scene at all. looks very similar to the scene in the first movie where the a woman gets killed by the gate when yeah. the guy they're chasing yeah, yeah, gets yeah, killed yeah. too they film it in that same kind of a, but it's not the same no yeah. Yeah, so no. yeah so they our characters Haley Atwell takes off as she's gonna she handcuffs Tom Cruise to the, the car the train's coming the train's coming it does you know obviously we know he's gonna get away but it does look like he Oof. may not get away it's close and now we're kind of back on we're back to square one with all of these people, Tom uh, Cruise crashed two thousand cars on train tracks to, <laughs> get to, get that the, to get that scene. Yeah, right. <laughs> we see Tom. You know, he kind of walks out, and we see Simon He's holding the steering and, wheel. And Ving, yeah, yeah. Hold, has a seat. Another funny him holding it down yeah, by his side. Yeah, trying to like, like keep it hidden. Yeah. We see that Simon Pegg pulls up with Ving Rhames, and then of course we see Rebecca Ferguson sitting in the car as well. So now we've got our core team is back yeah. together, and then I like they, how they kind of just look at each other like, oh. Well, I, I think I she says, right, she's what like, I, what, you told me to go to ground and I can't yeah. leave you. Right. And I do like that, like, this relationship, I would call it more of a situation ship, I think, <laughs> where it's like, they're definitely into each other. You know, like, there are scenes, you know, when we see them in, in Venice and she yeah. kind of, like, cuddles up to him. And yeah, it's like, that was sweet. I think so, too. I think it, yeah, they it went does, on a gondola ride. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. Like, wow, this is nice. It does give Ethan Hunt, it, it, I think of it as Superman, right? Like, Superman needs the human relationships to make him human right and to feel and human. a reason and to, to, and to Tom going. Cruise should try that maybe yeah. he has he tried and yeah. has failed miserably twice <laughs> so they they figure out that the this buyer is going to be at this gala they end up bringing Haley Atwell back into the fold and we find that Gabriel reveals himself to and we find out you know that this is the guy that set Tom Cruise kind of or Ethan Hunt on this Mission Path. Impossible mission. Yeah. World. And this is a Cy Morales is that who's actor. another great like character actor. You, yeah. you if you see him, you're like, oh yeah, I know that guy. He's playing this very shadowy figure that you can't quite tell what's going on and come to find out he's working with the entity. Tom Cruise in, in his AR glasses sees a flash of him. Right. They see footage of the airport and they're like, he's he's erasing himself in real time. The only it's, time they see him is in a reflection, yeah. which is a good little plot. Thing. I do like, I, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you it's know, nice. where it's like, yeah, we he's can't like see him on camera. Vampire. Yeah. It's right. And, and come <laughs> to find <laughs> out vampire. like if, you know, in that flashback he has from that first mission, that's who Gabriel is. He's one of the guys oh, I don't that, think I, I, that's not a mission. It's the, it's the, it's the heist. Well, yeah, Ethan whatever got hunt. him. Yeah. What, yeah. Yeah. Whatever got caught, him in yeah. trouble that got him into IMF. Right. That he was there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's the he's the catalyst for Ethan Hunt's current. He's his life. Joker. He kind of, you know, he's kind of the. he's his he blow, started. He's his blow felt. Yeah. Right. That's it's, exactly yeah. who this guy is. Yeah. Um, in, in that scene in the nightclub when he's talking about one of you has to die. You choose which one. I like I like the stakes there. I like it was yeah. y- you know that Ethan's going to get out of it very quickly, but uh, I like the stakes of it and I also really liked I was being played like a fiddle, but I let it happen when he's like this key will be presented to me and laid down at my feet on this train tomorrow, blah 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 mm-hmm. blah. He sets out the whole thing and when it happens, when it flash forward to it actually happening, in the theater I'm like, "Oh, oh man, <laughs> yeah. it happened. Yeah. He kneeled down and got it." Yeah. I was very excited about that and I knew they were playing me <laughs> plainly like a fiddle. But you kind of have to do that for this movie because if you're a a, a supervillain like it's Isai Morales or Gabriel is and you are pairing up with this computer entity, at what point do you do you have to let go of your own thought process and know that that machine will sacrifice you at any moment to yes. get what it wants. Yeah. Like he's like, Oh yeah, I'm going to be its right hand man. I'm going to be the leader of the, the free world or whatever. But it's like, there's, it's a 50, 50 chance that Hunt's going to kill him on the train. And Morales is just okay with that. His whole thought process and his whole pairing up and, and the weird kind of aloof nature of that villain 
you you kind of have to turn your brain off for it because when he falls off the train onto that truck that's driving oh. by, yeah, like okay, I can I can allow a lot of things, but if I'm going to allow that, I really have to accept that this is a Fast X world. But do you think this, it's possible to allow that? But this computer is supposed to be so good that he can. I mean, he's got he's got, he's looking at his watch. He's like, yeah, because he's and that watch is hooked up to the at the you know sure. what I mean? Entity. Yeah. I get it. I mean, I'm I'm on board with it. I accepted it, and I really enjoyed the movie because of it. But it's it's almost like the entire premise of the movie. It's Mission Impossible. There's eight, seven movies now, and like we said at the very beginning, surprise, they're going to win at the end. Yeah. It's an impossible. I mean, fil- I, uh, p- I grant that you that done. it's a ludicrous concept, but no, sure. that's fast X. But <laughs> but the concept <laughs> itself within that world, it's 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 living by its own rules. Like at, I like agree. when he falls yeah. into that truck, while at, you know, I'm like, no, that they, they knew that there'd be a delivery, and yeah, the I know. entity's telling him. Like yeah. he sets it because the entity's in control, and I like the idea. And if you watch Westworld, that's the, the same thing they're setting up. Where this thing is so freaking good. It's West. I don't want to spoil Westworld, but they're gathering a lot of data, and the reason they're doing it is to be able to predict things, world changing things, be in control of things, and so it's that good that it has ran all the computations. Yeah. And I like the idea that this villain. He isn't a villain that's scary because I've got all these henchmen or even I've got this big bomb. No, he can predict the future, but right. it's in a tech way. It's not yeah. a magic way. It's, it's that's not, scary. It's, it's, because a, it's by getting all of your information. You're like, look, you're going to, you know, about Haley Atwell or Rebecca Ferguson. He's you're telling going them. to put uh, you're going to choose one. Yeah. Yeah. One and of then, them. And then he can be like, oh, I, I hope I was hoping it was you. Here's yeah. how I look at the truck scene. How many times have you seen an actor do that in a movie? And there wasn't an explanation, yeah. right? Like it's like your your actor falls off of a bridge, and it just happens to be right that the right thing. Then you're like, oh come on, the yeah. Physics, and so that, yeah. at least here they, the, even though the answer is is admittedly ridiculous, like at least they had an answer. Yeah. Where typically it's just like surprise, we didn't kill the star yeah. of the movie. I, I, <laughs> there I was a yeah. pickup truck carrying mattresses that Ta-da. just happened to be driving by. <laughs> but so. it is in world too, though, because Pete, you got to admit though, they flipped. Over and over and over in a tiny Fiat and That's landed true. and didn't have a scrape on them. Okay, like, so here's a, I, this is the only the thing. Else. That shot where they flip that and they stay yeah. and the camera stays in the car. Great shot. Yeah. Holy smokes! Yeah. Yep. Like, yep, yep, yep. Like that was. Some I next think level I stuff. think of that. As, yes, they should probably have something, but I I think of that as that's like the secret agent car. <laughs> Right, I know. So I know. there is probably a little bit more it's got like a rear force rear- roll yes, bars, all and, of that. But stuff. you have to have some kind but, of suspension yeah. because but when they are flipping over, they're each still, other. yeah, like, <laughs> they're moving. I mean, they should have unless, at least broken windows and a dented roof. I yeah, agree. yeah, yeah. So there's it's some one of the, the smallest, lightest cars on the planet. So yeah. it's it's gonna have less da- damage than say a Hummer rolling over. Right. Sure, but I, yeah. I agree. There's like, I don't know the the entire concept of the movie. To me, the second you realize you're going into a Mission Impossible movie, and they wink at the camera and go, "It's called the Mich- the Impossible Mission Force." Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the name. That's what IMF stands for. I don't know if they said that earlier in the series they, either. But they don't. No, this is, this is the first say, time. Yeah. Okay, great, w- wonderful. Because I was experiencing it for the first time, and I'm yeah. thinking that is that's wonderful because it, it elevates the camp and cheese level yeah. of it. But it's like the best version. It's it's almost going back to the original TV series, right? Yeah. Yes, and very much. So. I didn't, budget, and that's kind of the the problem that they have, right? Is that it's based on a show 60s. that's sixty from like sixty something years yeah. old at this point. Yeah. And so like what we thought was cool, we're a lot more now well, savvy as as viewers now. And the same way that when we talk about yeah. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and we're like, oh my god. That fan service that was so fun. Now we watch and we're just like, oh my god, you are not spoon feeding, you are force feeding right, it to right. us. Right, so right. Let's get to the train. Yes. Yeah, so we get to the we get to the gala. We see all the bad guys. Everything's laid out. We, we get find the, out Vanessa Kirby is going to sell the key to Gabriel and the right. Entity. And I do like that in that scene. Ethan Hunt's like, hey, how about no? And she's like, <laughs> yeah. I gotta look out for number one. Yeah, because yeah. she's like, it's predicted. Like if I don't do this, I'm gonna die. This is the yeah. This is the scene where on this little bridge to the that the entity kind of starts deep faking Simon Pegg's voice, leading Ethan Hunt away, away. like further and further away. Right so into it gives Henchman Gabriel and Palm who plays Paris, oh, yeah. which he, good fight. He, that tight alley sequence. You know, I hate that. Up close like stuff. Cam for my, for yeah, my I feel it. Yeah, but, but, but in given their to film environment in that kind of a spot is pretty. And was, Ethan Hunt ends up, 
and even he ha- followed he, it. It wasn't just like a blur in front of the camera. Like no, they actually could. He was follow doing it. yeah, yeah. and then we le- he has Palm Haley Atwell fights Paris. him. Well, we should Paris, I guess, is Palm's yeah. name. Haley Atwell fights him, kind of loses, doesn't die, but loses, and then Beck Ferguson comes out with the sword that someone had earlier. Oh, that was cool. Uh, She's great. Had it Paris, earlier. Paris yeah, had but it we should say that in during this fight sequence between Paris and Ethan. Ethan has her dead to rights and lets her live, yeah. which will come back later. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we got Haley Atwell versus Gabriel and knife fight kind of loses. But like it, Gabriel turns around and there's Rebecca Ferguson. They have their fight and it's great. They, they're they both, you know, tagging each other. And it, what looks like Rebecca Ferguson gets stabbed in the chest mm. and you know, Ethan Hunt arrives too late and everybody's gone at that I point. I think she's dead, but we'll see. I wouldn't I, be beyond no, this series. I don't think so. I, I do, but it wouldn't be beyond I, I think the only reason I'm saying as to what Tom said is yeah. they say earlier... the When, the, when they the say entity choose ex- one, the entity one of ex- them has to die. And right. so they're trying yeah. to disrupt Correct. The, the entity's predictions by making the entity think it got... Because, but because Gabriel, if, Gabriel is the one that stabbed like how could gabriel oh, i'm was... not saying that she didn't get hurt oh okay yeah I, i'm I saying that she dead. didn't actually huh. die i just think it kind of undermines unless it's just to trick the audience but ethan hunt seems pretty depressed yeah. over but it again but he didn't he's... kill gabriel but on the train top yes and he's at a at, at a point where the entity can still presumably see mm-hmm. him okay so like if he's not grieving over okay. her right visibly publicly yeah. then the entity will know she didn't die I, so like I, like i think she got hurt like uh, and part yeah. of me almost wonders if they sent her there to take a dive that's like, what yeah. if, i think that that's was exactly the whole what goal. I think, that's exactly like, what you go happens. there and let yourself get injured so we can let you look yeah. dead to the entity, right? To serve a higher plot point, the yeah. greater the, could, the greater good, if you yeah. will. Yeah, I could see it. It's if if, if it's a <laughs> and really if that good. That wasn't the plan, and Christopher McQuarrie is listening. <laughs> yeah, if you're still writing, I would like. Are uh, we still writing? Uh, well, he, well, hopefully he's not writing. He's not supposed to be writing. Well, true. <laughs> good point. Oh yeah. Touché. Oh, did I just violate the strike? I yep. know. Oh crap. So I thought, so yeah. I thought you were an ally, dude. Yeah, yeah I try. I just. Mine's always work. <laughs> it's, it's, are you, also, just on that point real quick, you're going to tell me all those writers aren't writing right now? Like, I don't think they just well, turn that. turn it in, that's the, That is true. Right. But it, I guarantee you I they are cranking stuff. Know. Well, if they're on the picket I line, think if, I don't know. I think if it's like a passion project, if it's yeah. their own screenplay that they've been working on, I see them tinkering with it. I don't see if somebody writing a Batman if movie. If it's the next season of, right. you know. Curb. You yeah, they're not working because right. they're not getting paid. So they're certainly yeah. not working without. I just paid. find I just think as a, as people plus who are a lot of the those things are they're it's a writer's room. That's true. Like it's a group it's not a, it's of not people one guy. writing yeah. it. So it's like you you can't really necessarily write the next episode of a TV show by right. yourself because it's not the structure. That's a good point. That's a good point. So yeah, so this is where they bring Haley Atwell into the team. They're like, look, you're the. If you would have just stopped running from the get go, none of this would have happened. Katie was so mad at this character, and I was getting frustrated. Although I, I mean, I wasn't getting as mad, but like, it's like, yes, it's your fault, and especially when she apologizes, like, I'm sorry, this is my fault. <laughs> you know, Katie's over there. Yes, yeah, it is. It's Rose Byrne <laughs> from last week. It's like if you would have just helped them, yeah. Like it, so they bring her in. They're like, look, you're going to have to be this person. You're going to yeah. have to put this mask on. You're going to act like her. I did like you're the little. You're an IMF-er. That's, you're an imf yeah. I did like, I don't think I've ever noticed the little. The voice changer. The voice thing on her throat. I do it sometimes. It's that sometimes, was cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because so, that's the explanation because it's not supposed to be like magic. You know, it's like, how right. do they get their voices to sound Right, right. So. so They don't address the eyes though, I don't think. Okay, well, I'm glad. I like, I'm I glad like you that brought they didn't that change up. Change her eye color, yeah, but, but like, it, but are it never you telling came up that, that even the guy, the guy didn't like her own bodyguard was like, "Hey, day with him, yeah, yeah." I, I, I think never that was, pay attention. I never noticed what. Color but Vanessa Kirby, Vanessa Kirby has bright blue has like eyes, piercing. If you blue say eyes. so, I did not notice. They, they are. <laughs> I never noticed they, eyes. Okay, but they are distract. Like if you pay attention to that, yes, they are distracting. And I turned to Katie, I'm like, "But she has brown eyes," and I thought that was going to be a plot point. Maybe it was, and Macquarie's like, "Ah, never mind." Like, but it's so obvious. It's such an obvious. Her Vanessa Kirby, like when you see her for the first time, I was like, "It's also a good visual cue for the audience to know which one you're true. It might be for the audience, but but you're." expecting the guy to notice know. it yeah, yeah but no yeah. Kittredge so, is there doing well we should say that like ethan's supposed to be on this train with yeah. her as her bodyguard but i take it as the 
entity broke their machine. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And like they couldn't get the, the second mask printed. Yeah. In it time. caught it yeah. caught wind and stopped. Why does so, that machine have internet access? Is my right. question. That's well, they got to download what, the. Uh, why does my smart now? fridge have internet access? Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm yeah. No, you're right. But <laughs> so yeah, I, this is been broke my freezer. The Wi-Fi. Do you really? It does. I've never. What done does it do? Like I could like as I was driving home like oh let's preheat, preheat it. the oven. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. guess that's all right. Yeah. I've <laughs> never done right. it, but it's well, just... good luck when AI takes over. Yeah. yeah like... Your house is going to be very warm. <laughs> yeah. I'll be safe. It's coming for you guys. I'm already on Team AI. <laughs> oh, okay. So great. This is the giant it's great training. thing. It's, the... it's fantastic. This is great. Like, my only complaint about this movie is that, like, I feel like the other movies had more action scenes that were like, holy crap, what are they doing? This really kind of had one, which yeah. is this train scene at the end. But when like, you see what goes into him planning to do the job, jump and everything i just it's i very, get it yeah i get it but but i will say they at least they saved it to the end they go out with a bang yeah. like yes. this this scene and and this scene quote unquote has two major crazy yeah. stunts taking place the the motorcycle part and, oh, then, oh. and then the actual yeah, like yeah, yeah. the I got trains you. hanging off Man. the side of the yeah, the it's bridge. it's really cool but it's straight out of uncharted 2 i, was, I thought I the same thing way better game. No, 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 no you haven't game. seen it. The in the, game's in incredible. In the game, yeah, I think it's a movie. I've never yeah. seen it yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to tweet about this later. Don't you <laughs> steal it? No, I was, <laughs> Mission Impossible made a better Uncharted movie than Uncharted. It did. That yeah. movie sucks. Oh, I don't movie, think movie, yeah. it's not, the movie. It doesn't sucks. suck. But gotcha. the game is this incredible. This is the game. Yeah, like this feels like but, the scene from the yeah. game. When they, yeah, when they blow up that bridge and the tra- and the trains hanging up like. Like, I mean, I was grinning ear to ear. Yeah, I was like, "This is so it's cool." Well, when when like, he when when Gabriel triggers the bombs, and I was like, "Huh, how's that gonna?" Yeah. Oh, and we're it, gonna we're gonna back to the future to it, and okay. it looked so real. It looked like oh, it did, they it crashed looked, that train. Fake. No, they like, didn't. Yes, they did. I they I believe, crashed that train. And, but it even real. when they're going in the cart and it's like sure. inception with the way the yeah. it, things yeah. are turning around and they're floating and no, it like, looked incredible i'm like this is amazing yeah. that part's not real but they filmed that's why you have the camera angles and stuff yeah he crashed a train like a decommissioned train off of a bridge you know oh, wow. you know that's nolan's awesome. like oh yeah well i'm gonna detonate this nuclear bomb <laughs> yeah, no. now what i'm actually going to <laughs> destroy a, a third world nation rises. come on yeah. Yeah. so he so it's, it's a super... runaway train he yes. kills the conductor puts it full speed never back Never. No, <laughs> I love that song. And uh, <laughs> it, from there, it's just a huge fight chase. It's sequence. a massive set. Piece. Uncharted like two at the end. Yes. The the bridge blows. They have to. What's his Shea Wiggum and friend have to chase I, everyone. He, these and that's what I'm saying is like he has moments where you're like he's kind of a, but then he sees Kittredge, Kittner, Kittredge, Kit- Kittredge, Kittredge, and then we find out that like what the the main thing is. The U.S. government planned this whole thing, right? It didn't yeah. plan on it going this far, but Carrie Yules sets this whole thing into motion. And accidentally commit an act of war. Uh, correct. Yeah. 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 So Gabriel kills Carrie Yules. Kittredge K- is there. and We find out Vanessa Kirby's really going to sell it to Kittredge, which right. is a surprise. We thought she was going to choose Gabriel, and but she's there to do the deal with the, Kittredge. To the government. And the reason why she kills or Gabriel kills Carrie Elvis is that he's... He's the only one that knows the location of the sub on Correct. the planet, which is an interesting plot point for the audience because usually if there's a really important bit of information, it's left a mystery to the audience. But we're given it in the first scene. Right. right. Which right, is right, why right, right, I was right. so confused because yeah, it, it was so it's irregular. A weird, it's a weird to... way of storytelling because all the yeah. characters don't know, but we know, which is usually it's the opposite. The which characters is why... know. Yeah, I we couldn't, don't know. I couldn't read it. I couldn't yeah. understand what – because like they gave us the mystery of the whole movie. Right. And then when they reveal it to the characters, well, they give I go, you, oh, they we give knew you the that. information in the very beginning. Two hours later, I completely forgot. Oh, really? That it was. I was like, oh yeah, that's <laughs> oh, right. Oh yeah, we were on the submarine. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. That, that was a thing that happened. Yeah. So yeah, giant. You know, again, the key literally falls at Gabriel's feet. He picks it up. There's another little fight sequence between Ethan and Gabriel on the top of the train, which is right out of part one. Like this, this is the whole part pelic- one. What? Mission Impossible One, like there's oh. a, the whole scene. He's wearing the same outfit. He's got the gloves, oh, the black T-shirt. Like it's the same yeah. thing on top of this train. This is the part I can't buy. Like give him some magnet boots or something. I just do to they, fight on top. Do they, of it. do they fight when they're going under the tunnel in the first one too? Because that was giving me anxiety um, when they're laying I, on their stomachs. The only reason I think that they do is because I think Tom Cruise like pushes. He's hanging from the side of it. I know at one that, point, yeah. yes, but the the whole point of that is he's gonna 
go face first into a helicopter blade. Mm. The whole time I was watching, I'm like with those little signs going by. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. if you get hit by that, your head's coming off. No, it's know? not. Yeah. Because well, we know that it's not. I don't play by Indiana Jones universe <laughs> rules. That's the thing. Yeah. So they. I did like you never see characters. Okay. They're on their stomachs. And usually it's like time out. Yeah, yeah exactly. right, right. And this right. one, that's, that's what I was saying. Gabriel's like, like swipe, swipe. Yeah, like to, I'm coming at to, you with this knife, and it was up. very claustrophobic. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was scary. And you know, Gabriel, like we, he falls off the train into the truck, and he thinks he gets away. Turns out Tom Cruise pickpocketed him. Yeah. So now Tom Cruise has Tom the Cruise key. Pulled I do off 1,500 magic performances <laughs> to train for this movie. I do like the you know the Gabriel reaches into his pocket. He's now starring in a Doug Henning biopic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he pulls out this lighter that has been a thing throughout the yeah. movie, and he he pulls like a, a Kirk from wrath of khan yeah it's just like it was that was yeah. a little cheesy yeah, yeah. um and our heroes get away and but now they have a new mission but which is they got to go get that sub and they've got Haley atwell like yeah. Haley atwell says you know goes to kittredge and says ethan hunt tells me you're a man i can trust and it's just like He's not. Yeah. yeah. He's definitely not. And I think uh, even he's like, interesting. He would yeah. say that about me because remember in this first movie? <laughs> right. I was the bad he's guy. He's never been a man you can trust. He, but he killed says, his whole team. He yeah. says, I, you know, I, I choose to accept. And she is now part of IMF. And yeah, we're off to find the submarine. Which again, the way this ends, you could be like, okay, like we're not done done but yeah. this is the ending of a movie but, but yeah i i saw a whole movie mm-hmm. and, there, and you the, know and, and it's not like kind of one for temporary but... yeah and it's but it's not like we've never seen a movie that sets up the next movie yeah, right. like it's not yeah. a cliffhanger yeah. right i don't feel like no it's, it's not yeah. it's uh, yeah this is the perfect way i turned to katie and i said this is how you do a part one of something yeah yep. you yep. saw a whole movie great experience great action and you're left like i wonder what will happen next yeah and that's where we are and it, was, I, it was a lot of fun it was a lot these movies continue to amaze me because i on paper i shouldn't like anything about them they're just not my thing typically but they're so well done and they're fun they're fun yeah they're fun. super fun and everybody guys feel like you were dragging near the end did you feel long at all because I, I felt long in the I beginning I, yeah, I think the beginning same. Is... i felt more like that at the beginning where i was like let's get, get to, to the, the stuff. spy stuff by the time they were doing the train man i was just like oh, i'm yeah. all in yeah i'm all in yeah. that first part i think is rough to ramp up it was very exposition heavy and i don't think yeah. they need to like the the exposition was one of the worst parts yeah. of this movie yeah. though because they're literally all the different team members are taking turns explaining to yeah. the audience aka each other really the audience all the little blot points that they have to do which is you kind of have to do in a complex you know ins and outs uh secret agent sort of storyline yeah yeah but it fe- it felt it felt like, clunky I, it felt I, like they're looking right at the camera yeah and telling the audience that's why well I, and so many times that they're like well the entity will do this they, yeah. they explain that like five times it is, like, also yeah, i was i mentioned on twitter tom cruise says okay a lot <laughs> he says okay he says are you okay are you okay are you okay this okay it's gonna be okay everything's okay there was because okay it was during so, covid and he was checking in on yeah, everyone there was the line where he says <laughs> I'm never, I'm always going to value your life over my own. And I was like, that's like, yeah, like, I don't think you're wrong, but that's not comforting. But also that is a, that goes into how I feel about Tom Cruise. Yeah. Well, because also it's like life. how little he seems to value his own life. Correct. That, like That's not super comforting. But I also, yeah. it, it seems very sociopathic. Yeah. Like mm. it's a very sociopathic thing to say where yeah. he's just like, I, I'm going to, I care so much about you. Right. It's mm. love. Yeah. It's early in it's the very, He's love bombing. He's love bombing. Uh, yeah. Right. So. Right. <laughs> By the way, no, this was a lot of fun. I, I didn't think it was quite as good as the last two, but it was still a great time. Yeah, yes. I think I liked it more than the last one. Actually, I I, know, I think I'm kind of in the minority there, but I didn't like the last one as much as five and four. But they're, yeah. they're all solid these, action. These movies. are all they're uh, yeah. They're just <laughs> freaking impressive. That again, with all the planning and all the practical work and the cameras, this is a movie where I want a couple hours of special features to dive oh, into. Oh yeah, for sure. Like normally, normally that, it's just like a computer did it. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, this one, it's like. I watched the whole track. like thing, the YouTube thing they had about how they did the motorcycle thing. Yes, like that's where you oh, yeah, the yeah, number yeah, from. Yeah. 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 But anyway, I guess that's it for this one. Let's go around the table and everyone can say where to find this it. This is Joe. You can follow me on the Twitter at Joey Butts, B-U-T-T-S 21. Also on Letterboxd at the same. This is Kevin. Follow me on Twitter at Kevin R. Brackett. And Pete, where can they find you? Well, the, I think the best way to follow me would be just to subscribe to the podcast. It's called Middle Class Film Class released twice a week and we're in the middle of a trivia tournament which is um not for the faint of heart it's, it's going to be wrapping up in two weeks with the finale got a head-to-head which i can't say here because the, the last episode hasn't aired yet 
But yeah, follow us on any podcast app you want under Middle Class Film Class. And on Twitter for me is at it's, no, I'm sorry, at the real Pete with four E's in the middle. P-E-E-E-E-T-E. And that trivia awesome. thing is incredible. Like he's playing down like how <laughs> amazing, but he's done a great job with the production value, the sound effects, the questions are amazing. It's such a fun listen. So seriously, if you're like into trivia, movie buff type stuff, like it's super fun to listen to. You will not be disappointed. It is, is there's a lot of people going home in tears. It's <laughs> like, what questions are these? Yeah. Why? They're, they're fun. You did a great job. Awesome. Cool, and thanks. you can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. You can find the show online at facebook.com com slash real spoilers while you're there like the page join the group and check out the youtube so that's it for this one thanks for tuning in and until next time solo and curie can burn the disc get ready for a spoiler won't say it twice because we always